Chapter 8. 2021. Where is the real rate of price inflation today? Prices of goods and services are rising at different rates and people have mixed views on this issue. Coming out of the COVID-19 induced recession, some believe that the federal stimulus and spending programs will ignite a multi-year inflationary wave again. Others argue that price spikes in certain sectors like lumber and building products are merely temporary and due to a short-term lack of supply. In my view, price inflation is also an attitude or attitudinal phenomenon that spreads rapidly like fear. Once the ball of inflation starts rolling it takes time for attitudes and behaviors to change. Who wants to lower their prices when others are still raising their prices? Inflation is measured using a basket of goods and services. The COVID-19 virus disrupted inflation statistics because the pandemic shutdown drove changes in consumption patterns. These changes altered the official pace of price growth in different goods and services. Across the world, people stopped spending on restaurants, airfares and other lockdown restricted activities. As a result, some countries' real world experience have inflation differed from the official rate. And, the US inflation may have been underestimated. Spending on groceries increased 29% in March last year according to Opportunity Insights. In contrast, transport spending declined 70% in April last year. Also, a decline in production of cars and trucks over the past year pushed up used vehicle prices. Some argue that reweighting items in the CPI basket is necessary to more accurately reflect recent price changes. Americans spent less on transport since the start of the pandemic than the CPI weighting suggests. April's official inflation reading, which recorded a big jump, was probably an overestimation. As the U.S. economy reopens and lockdowns end, rate effects may reverse. Katharina Udermo, senior economist Italians, said policymakers will need to take note of this and test alternative measurement methods to get a better sense of actual inflation dynamics. Keep an open mind and try to appreciate both sides' views on our U.S. government stimulus issues. Is the current price inflation transitory or will it be more persistent? On May 19, 2021, Randall Quarles, the Federal Reserve's Vice Chair for Supervision and Regulation, said that the central bank is monitoring inflation. The COVID-19 pandemic is an unprecedented event. Reacting too soon might come at a cost of constraining an economic and jobs recovery. Mr. Quarles said that officials have the tools to tap down inflation if it remains elevated. The Fed could dial back barn purchases or lift interest rates to slow growth and weigh down prices. In my view, inflation is a fear phenomenon that can spread rapidly across many industries. Central bankers may try to slow down the rate of growth. However, it is more difficult to lower the price of goods and services when a fear phenomenon exists. As of June 2, 2021, the Federal Reserve said that it plans to sell the corporate bond portfolio it bought during the pandemic. The move completes the central bank's transition away from its support of that market introduced as part of a COVID-19 relief program. This is a signal that the economy is heating up and it may not need as much government stimulus. The Fed plans to start reducing the amount of bond EDFs it holds before winding down its bond holdings by year-end. Their plan is make the sales gradual and orderly. The aim is to minimize the potential for any adverse impact on market functioning and perceptions. The intent is to take into account daily liquidity and trading conditions for exchange-traded funds and corporate bonds. According to the Securities Industry and Financial Markets Association, the overall corporate bond market is more than $10 trillion in size. The central bank recently owned $13.8 billion in bonds and bond EDFs. While this is a small portion of the overall total, the sales send a signal to market participants and their perceptions. President Joe Biden is sounding out different advice as he pursues his economic agenda. He recently spoke with prominent critic Larry Summers on the economy after inflation warnings. As the president proposes significant amounts of new spending through his infrastructure and jobs package, there are concerns about the overall impact on possible price inflation. Summers believes that an inflation scenario is now greater than the deflation risks on which they were originally focused. He fears the economy may be overheating. At the time, the government reported that consumer prices rose 4.2% in April. President Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill might overstimulate and damage the economy by sparking excess of inflation. Coming back from once in a century pandemic creates a heightened level of unpredictability.
Biden's mm -hmm. aides have so far downplayed the risk of inflation. Their view is that the danger of spending too little to recover from the effects of the pandemic exceed the risks of spending too much. In 2020, the Fed introduced new facilities to offer liquidity to companies, state and local governments, smaller businesses, and nonprofits. Those facilities were seeded in part with money from the Treasury Department's Exchange Stabilization Fund. Five of those emergency facilities expired at the end of 2020. Those are different from the central bank's quantitative easing efforts, where the Fed has continued to purchase $120 billion in treasuries and mortgage-backed securities each month. Depending on how the U.S. economic recovery develops, the central bank is expected to start discussing reducing the pace of those purchases later this summer or fall. What should value investors do? Purchase businesses that are well adapted to an inflationary environment. Warren Buffett said that such a favored business must have two characteristics, one, an ability to increase prices rather easily, even when product demand is flat and capacity is not fully utilized, without fear of significant loss of either market share or unit volume, two, the business should have an ability to accommodate large dollar volume increases in business, often produced more by inflation than by real growth, with only minor additional investment of capital. However, Buffett also warned us that very few businesses possess both characteristics and competition to buy those that do will become fierce. So, be careful in your assessment of price and value, 